This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I upgrade to ZBrush 2018? So to start off, I am just at pixelogic.com, and you can see we have the banner here for ZBrush 2018, and we want to click this jump in button. So I'm just going to come over here and click this, and this will take you to the ZBrush 2018 page. On this page, you have three options. So if you are not an existing user of ZBrush and would like to purchase ZBrush, you can use this link here. This will take you to the store for Pixelogic and it'll allow you to purchase a license of ZBrush 2018. If you are an existing user of ZBrush, so if you had ZBrush 4R8 installed, you can upgrade for free by clicking the Upgrade ZBrush button here. Or if you are a ZBrush Core user, you can purchase an upgrade from ZBrush Core to ZBrush 2018 by clicking this button here. If you have a floating license that is managed by your company, you will need to submit a support ticket at support.pixelogic.com to upgrade to ZBrush 2018. For this video, we are going to assume that you have a ZBrush license with a serial number, so we just need to click this Upgrade ZBrush button here. Now when we click this button, it's going to now take us to our My Licenses page. The licensing system for ZBrush 2018 has been changed to allow you to use a single email address and password to activate and use ZBrush. If you have logged into the support site, or use the My Licensing system before, you can simply just put in your email and password and log in with your existing Pixelogic ID. If you have not used the My Licensing system before, you will need to create a support account. And this can be done by clicking this link down here. Now it is important when you create the support account that you use the email address that is associated with your ZBrush serial numbers. So when you click this No Support Account Register Here button, make sure that you sign up with the email address that's associated with your ZBrush serial numbers. So I already have a account, so I'm just gonna type those in, and I'm gonna click the login button. So after you click that button, you should be taken to the My Licenses page, and this is what it should look like. And then if we scroll down here, you should see a list of the licenses of ZBrush that are currently associated with that email address. If you do not see any ZBrush licenses listed here, make sure that you have logged in with the same email address that is linked to your ZBrush serial keys. If you do not know the information that is linked to your account, you may need to contact support.pixelogic.com. So with this account, you can see I have one ZBrush license linked here. So I can come over here and press this plus key, and this will now show the full information for these. So you can see this one has two licenses. So I have a ZBrush for Windows license and a ZBrush for Mac license. Now ZBrush 2018 supports cross-platform. So whatever platform your license is for, your ZBrush 2018 license will give you download links for both platforms. Now to upgrade to ZBrush 2018, you just need to log into your My Licenses page like we just did, and you just need to click this Upgrade to ZBrush 2018 button. So I'm just gonna come across here and now click this button. And this will take you to the Upgrade Center page. And here you should have a list of the serial keys that are associated with your email. So you can see I have the Windows here and also that Mac OS X. Now if I want to upgrade one of these licenses here to ZBrush 2018, I just need to come over to the checkbox here and simply click this and then click the Upgrade Licenses button. So after you click that, you'll be taken to a confirmation page, and here it should list the license you want to upgrade again. And now you can click Confirm Upgrade. After you click that button, you'll be taken to one final upgrade confirmation page with your order number here, along with your license now listed as ZBrush 2018. Below that information, there is a button you can click to get to the download links to install the ZBrush 2018 installers. So at this stage, I'm just gonna come across this button here and click, and you'll be taken to the ZBrush 2018 download page, and here you'll find links to download the ZBrush 2018 installers. So at the top, we have the Windows installers, and then at the bottom, we have the Mac OS installers. Now, it is recommended that you temporarily disable your antivirus software before downloading, installing, and activating ZBrush. 
There are times where some antivirus softwares will corrupt the installer as it downloads. So it is recommended to temporarily disable it, download, install, and activate ZBrush, and then re-enable it. So to download the installer, you just need to click on one of these links that is close to a server in your location. So I'm currently in North America, so I would use this link here to download the Windows version. And then to download the Mac OS version, I would use this link here. So after you click one of these links, the installer will be downloaded to your hard drive, and then you can install through that file. After you have the installer downloaded, you should now have a file that you can run, and this will now install ZBrush 2018. So to install ZBrush 2018, you just need to come across the installer here and double click. And this should now start the ZBrush 2018 installer. So the first dialog that will pop up will allow you to select the installation language that you would like to install ZBrush in. So you can just click this down arrow here and you can select a language out of one of the ones listed here. At any time after you have installed ZBrush, you can also change the language as well. So do not fear if you have selected a language here, you will be able to change it later as needed. So I'm just going to select English, and then I'm just going to click OK. This will now bring up the setup window here, and it's going to walk you through the installation of ZBrush 2018 on your computer. So I'm going to click Next. You can read the end license agreement here, and then you can accept it, and then click Next again. Then on this page, you'll be able to choose where you would like ZBrush installed. I'm just going to install this to the default directory, and then click Next. You can also select what components you would like to have installed. So these are things like the documentation and also the plugins. So for the default installation, I'm just going to keep all of these checked. And then I'm going to click Next again. And then after you've gone through all those steps, you can click Next one more time. And ZBrush should now go through the installation process on your machine. While this is installing, you'll get a slideshow of various artwork created by beta testers for ZBrush 2018. When it is done, you'll get a completion window here, and here you can toggle some checkboxes as well. The first one will allow you to launch ZBrush 2018 immediately. You also have the option to open the ZBrush documentation folder or go to the video tutorials on C Classroom. So I'm just going to uncheck the bottom two and just make sure I have launch ZBrush 2018 checked and then I'm going to click the finish button here. Now after ZBrush has launched you'll see this little dialog that's going to pop up and it's going to ask for the email address and password for your Pixelogic ID. So the information that you input in here is the same information that we used on our My Licenses page. So I'm just going to enter my email again and also my password. And then I can just simply click the login button. If you do not have an internet connection, you can still activate your license of ZBrush through the offline activation option here. And after you click this button, you'll receive instructions on how to go by using that process. For this one here, I am connected to the internet, so I just need to simply click login. Now, after you click the login button, your browser should launch and you should be taken to an activation page. Here will list your license of ZBrush 2018 and it will tell you how many activations you have available. So you can see I have two activations available here. And now I'm simply just going to click the select button. And this is going to allow me to activate ZBrush 2018 on my machine. So I'm just going to click select. After you click select, you'll be taken to another activation page. Here you'll have your license information displayed again, along with an area where you can provide a description for your computer. After you're happy with the information on this page, you can just click the submit button here. After you click that button, you'll be taken to the final activation page here with a congratulations. And so now we just simply need to close our browser and go back to ZBrush. So I'm just going to close this quick. Back inside of ZBrush, we now just need to click the Check My License since we have activated it through the online activation using our My Licenses login. And when we click this Check My License, it should find the license and ZBrush should now be activated. So just clicking Check My License here. After ZBrush has been activated, you'll see the home page will now pop up like so. Here you'll find information on various events and items that are currently happening inside the ZBrush community. 
So I can just close this. And then now we should have ZBrush visible on our screen. So at this stage, you can hit comma on your keyboard to close Lightbox. If you'd also like to expand your canvas out to the extents of your UI, you can go to the document panel up here, open this up. You can change the background range here. If you don't want the gradient, you can change this range all the way down to zero. It'll give you this nice flat background. And then you can click the new document button here, which will create a new canvas document based on your UI size. So it's gonna take that and bump it all the way to the edges of your UI. You can now store this as well by going back to the document panel and then clicking save as startup doc. And now that will remember your canvas size when you launch ZBrush. With ZBrush 2018, you also now have the ability to set your default matte cap. So if you don't wanna use the matte cap red wax material here, you can come here and open this up. We can now select a new material, say something like matte cap gray. And then after you have that material selected, if you go back in this panel one more time, down here at the bottom, there is a save as startup material button. So I can click that button as well. And this will now store matte cap gray as my starting material. So now the next time I launch ZBrush, and if I don't load any files, this is what it should look like. And now we can just get into sculpting here. So I can come over to the tool palette and I can just click on the Polymesh 3D star to get the quick pick menu. In here I can say select the Sphere 3D. I can now click and drag to draw that out on my canvas. I can hold down Shift to lock it into an axis orientation. Then I can activate edit mode by pressing T on my keyboard or clicking the edit button here. After the Sphere 3D is in edit mode, I just need to make this a poly mesh. So I can go to the tool palette, go make poly mesh 3D. Now I can activate symmetry by hitting X on my keyboard. I can change my brush size and then come up here and activate the all new Sculptress Pro, which is inside ZBrush 2018. And now I can come through and start sculpting on my model with that Sculptress Pro feature. So getting right in and starting to sculpt inside of ZBrush. Now, if you're new to ZBrush, there is one more item I just wanna hit on quick with the installation. So if you'd like to save your file inside of ZBrush, you have two options. You can number one, save a ZBrush project file, which will save undo history and also any tools that are in your palette. This can be done by going to the file menu up here and then using the save as option here. If you'd like to save your undo history, just make sure this option is turned on before you click save as. The second way to save a file inside of ZBrush is to save a ZTL or a tool file. To do this, we can go to the tool palette over here and then click on the save as option and this will allow you to save a single ZBrush tool. So if I clicked save as right now, it would save this tool I have selected here and any subtools that are associated with that tool. Now, when you save a tool file using save as over here, this will not save undo histories. So if you wanna save undo histories for your model, you wanna come up to the file save as option here and save a ZBrush project file or ZPR file instead of saving a ZBrush tool file. So that is the quick rundown on how to upgrade from a existing version of ZBrush to ZBrush 2018. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.